in Southern California. Another beautiful day out here. And uh, the news, oh uh, man, how the tables turn. <clears throat> Last night I did an epic three hour stream talking about the Ed Reed situation. And then um, and the premise of the stream was like, is he wrong? I understand the way he went about it is very unprofessional. I understand if you want to garner attention to an issue, it's better to have soft skills and to do it in a, in a more proper way. Ed chose to be Ed, and uh, Ed got the boot. So um, if you guys haven't been seeing, Bethune Cookman has parted ways with Ed Reed. And if you go look on his Instagram, he has the video of a live that he did when he was talking to the kids, talking to the program. And you guys hit that like button. Let's get some more bodies in so we can talk about this. Um, he didn't want to go. And, in th and the unfortunate thing is, and a uh, shout out to my guy between the games, Sports. He went live about 30 minutes ago. It's like getting fired on your day off, man. And if you watch the, the stream, what Ed was speaking about was like how committed he is to these kids. And you had me out there when I wasn't even under contract. He'd been there for three weeks, apparently. And he seemed very distraught, man. Um, and it's a cautionary tale a few ways around, and I, but I'll get to that. Uh, let's see. Older God says, again, we don't want better. He did nothing wrong. And, and that kind of seems to be the underlying thing, man. L listen, man. I understand that we want things from a, a public standpoint to be a certain way. I.e., we don't like people, you know, taking the number two on the HBCU experience by any means. But we also know that there's a problem. And he talked about it again in his live. Like there's several buildings with just nothing but trash in them. He's like, those things need to be addressed. Which, I mean, listen, man, wholeheartedly, I, I agree. I agree. You can't just be sitting there wallowing in, in squalor. Well, not, I ain't going to call it squalor, but, you know, to have an upstanding program, man, certain things just, you need to, you know, just be a little nipped up. You need to tighten up. Because, listen, man, that sets the tone for how clean other avenues of your enterprise is. So you can't bring a coach in and the coach is looking at a trash office where he goes and puts the work in and air reset himself. Listen, <laughs> I've been out here at three o'clock in the morning most days. I slept over here because I'm so committed to this and now he's been let go. Very interesting. O also says, if we want better, we got to accept constructive criticism. Yeah, and, and listen, man, I, I think Ed Reed could have, he could have aimed his critique a little better. I think the way that he went about it, um, it it's very abrasive. I'm not going to sit here and act like Ed has no, no blame in this. I think, again, man, having interpersonal soft skills would have helped him. But like I always said on stream after stream, did he lie? <laughs> did he lie? <laughs> Bro, you really think trash is the reason he's gone? No, I just think that that was one of the talking points he had. And I, I think that that with, I mean, he, he was talking about an incomplete field, incomplete fence, fencing around the field. He was talking about the field conditions of where track and football practice, he, he was like, it's unacceptable. So I, I think it's a combination of things, actually. Um, and I mean, he has that right. I mean, listen, man, like I said in the stream last night, man, you guys check it out, man. Again, epic three hour stream. Shout out to Miss Diva. Shout out to uh, Brian for coming on. Listen, man, that's a five-star coach that you got. As far as his knowledge, now, has he proven that in the college ranks as a coach yet? Not necessarily. But you know that's a guy who's going to come in with knowledge. He's going to come in with a, um, a strong knowledge of South Florida. So you, you're going to get guys. It's just that, again, he's going to come in more abrasively. Like, with Prime is more like a, a finesse guy. Air Reed is a straight shooter. So when you're a straight shooter, your messaging can come off a little uh, more brazen. And I think that that's what ultimately led him out. Um, he also said that, uh, again, he doubled down on the notion that, man, Prime went lying. He said it again. So, I mean, I, I respect him staying on this square, man, because I, I say this affectionately, man. Again, HBCU alum here. I'll always go to bat for any HBCU. But... When someone kind of comes in with some real harsh critique, non-filter, we don't receive it well. We don't take it well at all. Because what we generally do, we go straight into defense mode. Well, it's because of this. And well, you don't know how it is with this. Okay, fair enough. But it doesn't matter. Like every school, 
well, most schools, let me say, there's some schools that's got it made in the shade, alumni give crazy money back. They don't have to want for anything. So we know those exist, your blue bloods as it were. But for a lot of schools, man, funding is an issue. But with a lot of schools, you, you find competent counsel to figure out how to use the money, right? And you put the best prop, put the best product you can on that field in the most competent way you can. And I see that at some HBCUs, I'm gonna say a lot, there's something amiss in, in that formula. So when someone steps in who's not used to that, they're gonna call it out. They're gonna call it out pretty strangely. You guys hit that like button. I see we're 15 deep. Appreciate y'all. Uh, say, how you gonna get fired in your day off? <laughs> I knew somebody was gonna say it. I mean, yeah, man, it, it's it's a damn shame, man. And again, to see Coach uh, Reed talk to the players and how passionate he was, and he was saying how he talked to some of the parents last night. He's like, man, I, I didn't leave it on my own volition, man. I'm getting forced out. And I'm not going to lie, from a PR standpoint, as pious as Bethune-Cookman may have looked because of Ed just kind of using the wrong words as he was describing what he was seeing, it kind of makes you look bad now. It kind of makes you look bad now. So I, I don't know what the Board of Regents or, or the, the, the council has, has, why they decided to terminate him like that. Maybe they had a meeting that didn't go right. I can't call it. But it, it doesn't look good. It doesn't make Bethune look good out of this. Just saying. Um, let's see, Stoney says, Dion off his man a job probably after he's announced being a coach at Bethune. This whole tangent, let me see, this whole tangent was to legitimize him going to Boulder. Why do he do all that while Dion Sanders live? That was suspect. Well, I, I don't know if it's, it's collusion or anything like that. I, I can't, I don't have enough intimate knowledge of the timeline to, to put those things together. But I mean, maybe. Um, I, I don't think if Prime was going to snatch him, he doesn't do all that. I don't think you. I because well, let me say this. I don't think Coach Prime cares that people are so mad he left. I think he he recognizes it. I think he thinks that that sucks that people view it that way. But Coach Prime is an on to the next kind of guy. Um, so I, I don't see why he would have to do a misdirection like that just to get Ed Reed. I, I don't I don't see that. But I mean, I could be wrong. I don't know. All right, so let's see. Um, Caroline Geno Six says, guess it was true. He didn't have a contract. Agreement principle. Why HBCUs do it. Yeah, that was pretty weird to me. I, I've never seen a, a contract in principle and, a, and so much so where a guy's hitting the, the ground running because he understood that the, the uh, signing period is, is approaching end. So he went into that situation ready to roll. Um, without a contract, yeah, that is pretty weird, but that strikes me. Well, let me say this. In the same vein, Ed Reed is a guy who has money on top of money. Now, if this was a, a normal guy, yeah, I, I would definitely be uh, <laughs> turning my, my uh, like, you know, uh, turning my head like, what the hell are you doing? Like, there's no way you go work beforehand. But if money isn't the real issue, then I, I can see you going in and just putting the work in because you want your program to be upright and functional because that's your brand. Like, what you roll out next year, you know, if you still have the job, that's what, you know, what your personal brand is, being Ed Reed. So uh, I can see him putting in personal pride to make sure that, it was a good inaugural uh, experience. Oh, let's see. If you was on, so to the next, why he continue to throw Jackson State under the bus? Uh, if he moved on. Uh, well, what did he say? Educate me. What did he say? Now, is he answering people's questions and he just throwing it out there just to be clear? Or is he going out of his way to do it? So that would be my question. Uh, so the man just gave props to JSU on national TV. Stop the reach. Yeah, see, again, I haven't seen it, so I'm not calling the brother a liar. I just, I haven't seen it. So if, if you're going to make that claim, you, you got to let me see that so I can update my, my opinion. Because what I've seen, Prime has been more about getting his own player and then flipping old buddy from, um, uh, what school was that when he commit to? Was it Miami? I forget the dude name. I've been following this story for like two weeks. But uh, he officially flipped him yesterday, man. So I don't know, man. I haven't seen a lot of Jackson State bashing. But correct me if I'm wrong, man. Um, so, so, so let's bring it back. Ed Reed just kind of came into a situation where I don't think he was ready for the optics. He was ready for the red tape. He wasn't ready for that experience that he, he has to kind of, he has to step back and understand how protocols run. And when you publicly bash your school in that fashion, it, it's not going to land favorably. Even if what you're saying is 100%, it's called tax, man. And, and, and again, that's my only indictment on Ed Reed, that he could have had a lot more prudence. He could have been a lot more tactful. But other than that, 
<laughs> I'm going to say it over and over. Did he lie? Did he lie? So we are 22 strong. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Y'all hit that like button, man. Let's get some more bodies, man. All right, so Miami. Okay, got you, got you. Okay, yeah, it was Miami. So so the last two years, Coach Prime had the two number one cornerbacks in, in the nation on his squad next year. So Lord have mercy, man. <laughs> that secondary is going to be stout. But, okay, so so back to Bethune. So, so now that the problem turns to, how do you sell this job to another coach? Now, I know there's, there's going to be somebody who's going to be ready to take any job, which I don't begrudge any man for doing that. But somebody who actually has, you know, options out there and can say yes and no to a job and it being kind of late in the game, how, how do you sell that program? It's a little bumpy. You see that the, the, um, the people can be a little abrupt with some of their um, decision makings. The field ain't up to snuff. So you probably have to bring a guy in who's used to that. So how do you sell that? Where does Bethune Cookman go from here? And that's the biggest thing I, you know, I wonder because, you know, now I'll be honest, if they weren't part of the SWAC, I wouldn't care as much. <laughs> you know, I put the SWAC over everything, but now they are a member of the SWAC. So that makes the, you know, the whole conference look bad if you got some, some crazy stuff going on at, at Bethune. So I just wonder, man, how do they sell that to the next man? Or you tell me, Chad, if you were coaching, you saw that play out like that, would you, would you uh, want to go and coach for them? Man, they're going to get the janitor to coach like they've been doing for the past 20 years. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. But though Cookman had, had a damn good run. Now, it's just in the last, like, three or four years that they've been absolutely horrible. But Bethune had, had, a, had a good run, like, I want to say uh, late, early teens through about 2016. Bethune had a hell of a run. So I, I ain't going to quite go there. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. Christopher Burton says the only option they have is a coach who has no option. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So when you get late in the game and then you, you, you show some little institutional control issues, what kind of talent pool are you pulling from now? And a guy has to come in hitting the track running because everybody, you know, is, is flipping these guys from the transfer portal. And hopefully the guys that Ed Reed brought in, hopefully they stay. But, you know, kids tend to go follow coaches or leave when a coach that they want leaves. So I wonder how all that plays out. Because I think the timing is horrible. I think, man, when you got in bed with Ed Reed, it would have been better to have a come to Jesus meeting with him and just kind of try to, uh, you know, make amends with, with the fallout. But obviously it didn't go that way. And I, I'm, I'm surprised, man. I mean, I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised, but I'm surprised if that makes sense. And the reason I say that is because, again, whether he's right or not, which he was right in my opinion, the way you go about things, it, it, being abrasive, you do kind of force people's hands sometimes. You, you do force people's hands. So I'm not going to act oblivious to why this situation came to how it came. But, you know, it's just interesting to see what the next plan is for Bethune because everybody talking about him and not for a good reason. You, you came off a one, a 2-9 and nine season last year, I think a 1-10 and ten season the year before. So, I mean, I guess you're getting better. <laughs> If you want to call uh, a one-game improvement getting better, you're getting better. But And then you sign a, a high-level guy like Ed Reed, and then he comes and talks about how bad of a situation there is to work with. That's just not a good look, ladies and gentlemen. If we got any Bethune fans, I'm sorry. That's not a good look. That's, that's a horrible look. Let's see. Uh, yeah, they had a former friend. Former friend. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Sky in the building. Shout out to my guy, Flight Sports TV. Signing day in two day, in two weeks. Yeah, man. Like So the next coach has to come in and do some serious recon to be able to salvage a program up because, oh, Lord have mercy. If you miss out on, on opportunity on signing day, like, you, like you're done. You're pretty much going to have a team full of walk-ons or like preferred walk-ons or late transfers who, who, who have nothing else, which you don't want a program with leftovers, basically. No disrespect, but come on, man. You can technically fire something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess not. <laughs> a a pre-fire. Think that's 0-11 season. This year. Yeah, I mean, they was 1-10 the year before, 2-9 and nine last year. I mean, with no leadership, can you really expect nothing besides zero in, for season? Now, I think Jalen Jones is still going to be the quarterback, which I thought he was a good quarterback for Jackson. But, I mean, there's a lot of questions all around that field. And, oh, by the way, 
the biggest question is the guy who's going to lead the guys out the tunnel every day. So I just haven't seen a lot of programs do well when you throw a coaching situation in late. Uh, this kind of reminds me of when I played at Prairie View my first year. We had uh, Coach Hawk take over as the interim head coach um, my first year there, which is my junior year. This is 2005-06. And uh, he didn't have his staff together all the way. And so I just remember those first few days, like, during summer and right after, like, school started, we didn't have our full staff together. So it, it was very, you know, it was very hodgepodge, man. It, it, it just was kind of, it didn't lead to us building the team the right way. Let me put it that way. Because that year we won two games in SWAC. I, overall, like, the, the team was horrible. But it's because we had lack of structure from, from the jump. And so when I look at that and I compare that to what's going on in Bethune, it just makes me wonder, man, like, damn, are, are they going to be ready? Because it's a lot of preparation that goes to get a, a, a program together, bro. Uh, so they about to go D2 soon. <laughs> I doubt it. Last chance you finna be better. <laughs> yeah, and last chance you were uh, Juco. <laughs> I, I'd hate to see the day when a Juco better than a um, legit D, D1 program. Lord have mercy. I ain't gonna front. My second year at Prairie View, we, we, we almost lost to a school called Southwest Assemblies of God. They're like a D, D15. <laughs> man, they had a post player, man. He was giving us everything that, he, that, that we wanted, man. And uh, at the time, I was in a doghouse, so I didn't play very few, very, uh, uh, not a lot of minutes, which was, I mean, I think Coach learned that lesson because by the time Swag came around, I, I never came out the game. But at any rate, yeah, we almost had an embarrassing loss, so it, it can happen. <laughs> <laughs> it can happen, goddammit. All uh, right, let's see. All uh, you guys are speaking to each other. Uh, let's see. So what's, what's the next coach? They may be as closed down. Well, I, I, I ain't going to say that. You say Edge dodged a bullet. Well, I mean, it depends on how you look at it. He dodged a bullet in the sense that maybe that's like the right, you know, uh, office of people to work with, with his given personality. Okay, I'll meet you there. But a bullet in the sense that he wouldn't have had success, I, I don't quite know that. I don't quite know that. Now, as far as coaches, I, I mean, shit, it looked like Prime done, <laughs> done fished out all the, the black talented coaches. So now what do you go do now as a, um, as a staff at Bethune-Cookman? Do you go try to pull, you know? Now, here's what I would do. I would go look for a, a coordinator who may be some rumblings that he's willing to move, and you take a chance on him. And you bring him in to give him his first head coach job. Because most coordinators, man, they're looking for their first job, you know, in the division division one level. So that's what I would do. I would try to poach a coordinator. Um, I don't know if there's any. Also, I would go the alumni route, but I'm not sure if there were any former BCU players who were in the coaching circuit. Um, I just don't know. That's just pure ignorance on my part. So I'm not going to throw that out there. But that's what I would do. Because we saw last year, uh, my guy Anton Sewell, man, he got the job as D coordinator. Uh, coming from Bowie State to Alabama State, and he ended up going back home to Bowie uh, as a D coordinator, you know, after he'd already accepted the Alabama State job, when he was already out there in, um, in um, what city that in? Montgomery. He'd already start working. So that same premise, maybe you can pull a guy who, maybe he's from Florida, maybe he's working East Coast, he'd prefer, prefer to be uh, closer to home. Maybe you can poach him back down there and sell him on being the face of, of, uh, of Cookman. So um, that's just the way I go personally. But if you ask me to throw a name out there, I ain't got one for you. So <laughs> it's kind of late in the game. I ain't got a name for you. Uh, let's see. BCU administration setting up coaches to lose. Well, it, it certainly seems that way. I tell you what, because when you come in and then again, when you pitch to a coach, you're going to have to address the elephant in the room. Because the, the world's watching. The world's watching how you handle, you know, cats who you want to come in and take over your program. The world's watching. So you can't just uh, sneak through the back door on this one. You can't just sneak through the back door. Uh, Bowie State has everything and succeeding at a high. Yeah, absolutely. Bowie State, well, in Bowie, Bowie State and, and Coach Sewell was saying, too, that there's some things that they don't have, that they had to kind of just put it together. And just go off the brotherhood to keep things intact. But you're right, man. Bowie, Bowie's been killing, man. Bowie, um, I think they won three of the last four championships in, in that division. It were in, in their league. Um, two of their guys went to Southern University playing cornerback safety. I wonder how they did this year. 
But yeah, no, that's a very upstanding, very uh, very well run Division Two program. That's for damn show. Sure. Uh, let's see, Dion Fire. What you what you talking about, Jazz? <laughs> what you talking about, Dion Fire? Colorado be be the biggest fools on the planet to, to fire uh, Coach Prime for what he's doing over there, flipping that number one uh, corner. I, I don't know why I keep forgetting his name. I, I've been saying his name for the past like two weeks on, on panels now. Now I can't think of his name. And what I was saying was, if, if Coach Prime can flip him, man, it's gonna be dangerous. And Colorado better start counting their days because that that man is not gonna stay at Colorado. <laughs> I give him three years tops if he wins. If he wins, Coach Prime is out. I think his final destination wants to be SEC or Florida State. But yeah, Colorado, enjoy him while you got him. You know, Dion De- will boogie. <laughs> Wrong black man, yeah. <laughs> Cromani, yeah, Cromani, there you go. Appreciate you, Mr. Geniality. Yeah, Cromani was a big flip, man. So you, you can think what you want to think about Prime. But flipping Travis Hunter and, Cr- and Cromani two years in a row, that's unheard of, man. Number one prospect at that position. Travis Hunter, number one prospect in college uh, sports, period. College high school uh, football, period. College high school, that shit don't even sound right. High school football, Lord have mercy. But yeah, man, so at any rate, see, BCU broke their word, Star Hole needs administration. Yeah, and, and, and shout out to my guy between the game sports. Uh, yeah, and he said it, he implicitly said that they lied to me. So when I said this um, last night on the stream, so a lot of people saying Coach Prime lied to us. Like, yeah, well, I tell you what, everybody is selling dreams. Who's will sit here and tell you what they can do for you? And they don't deliver. Athletes will come and say what they're going to do, and they're going to, they committed, I'm committed, coach. They can mess around, not like what's going on. They start pouting, they start rebelling. <laughs> hey, all the way around, man, it's, it's, a, it's a whole bunch of posturing that goes on. Um, I've had teammates, literally, they was like, they, they hate basketball. They're just playing it because they got on scholarship. But they would never tell coach that. So they just kind of fall into a pit where they don't even get they, they all. They just like whatever. So it's a whole bunch of posturing going all the way around. And so the administration kind of taking the L for promising him things that he did not see come to fruition. And something he also said in the live stream that was interesting, he was like, I guess, I guess some people just want to talk about change and they don't want it as fast as, as I want it. Which I see it happen in HBCU ranks. Talking about change is one thing, but going out there and, and pinning your ears back and going and doing it, that's a whole nother thing. And some people are just more talkers. Some people are more doers. Tell me I'm lying. All right, so we 30 deep. Y'all hit that like button, man. At least you get to half. Appreciate y'all for, uh, so I'm about to head to uh, work, but I had to do this. Well, I'm heading to work. Oh, I had to do this though, because this is breaking news. And I saw my guy between the game sports covered it too. I was like, damn, he got fired. Yeah, that's news to me. Real man standing on your word. Clean it up. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think some people just don't want to be held to that standard because it's, it's so vital. It's so permanent. Like, oh, I got to say it, so I got to do it. And I'm not saying I'm a person who follows through with everything I say that I'm going to do. And my girl be getting on me about that sometimes. But it's good practice to be called out on that shit because you got you to gotta follow through. You have to follow through. So if the administration say, we're going to do this for you, Ed, and it's like, I need it today. I don't need it tomorrow. I need it now. Like, or give me a timeline. That's what it strikes me. That's what Ed Reed strikes me as, as a person. All right. So, uh, everyone's a salesman at different points. Uh, absolutely. And being a salesman, the first thing you sell is yourself. So, the administration, I'm sure they, they, they sold themselves to Ed Reed. I'm sure vice versa, he did that too. Some people are a little, a little more honest with their sales pitch. I'm literally in sales. That's what I do for a living. Yeah, some people are just more genuine <laughs> than others. <laughs> I, can, I can write a book about that. Said, uh, then they recanted their decision because his actions. No one on earth is saying the person who behaves that way, Saban would be gone if he did that. AI voice talking about cleaning. We talking about cleaning. <laughs> well, Here's where I disagree a little bit that on Imperial. Nick Saban wouldn't have to do that. Nick Saban wouldn't walk in no unclean, unkept uh, circumstances. Because if you remember, when he took over Alabama, Alabama was horrible. That's when they was going through the Brody Croyle uh, era and all those uh, guys. 
The program was terrible. But the whole selling point was they had a lot of real estate to work with. They had a lot of faithful friends out there in Tuscaloosa who come to every Alabama game, no matter what. The programs were A1, the, the facilities were A1. So if, if we're being honest, I don't think, um, I don't think Saban would remotely be under those circumstances to know if he would say something like that. Just keep it, just keep it in the bean. So I don't know if I agree with that. Oh, let's see. Uh, Marcus Mason says it may be in day a man or a woman. Your word, you do, you, you say you're gonna. Uh, I, I got to just what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, man, because one, I guess, misstep that you may have taken may take you out of a, of a situation later. Meaning, like you, you may have have you know misrepresented yourself to, to a person, and maybe you didn't mean to. You didn't follow through. Then this person like, oh, this dude's unreliable. They may not trip. They may not call you on it. Let's say down the road, they're like, hey, man, uh, yo, so what, what about that, that, that Cliff guy? They're like, oh, man, hey, man, I, I wouldn't do business with him. So you not following through can have a residual negative effect. Give me one moment, y'all. Uh, Thank you. Can I have a breakfast jack combo? With the orange juice? Orange juice, fine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, seven even. Okay. Yeah, so you, you got you to gotta watch those kind of things, man. You got to watch those kind of things because uh, you never know how it can snowball back. And so how that can help. I'm sorry, how that can affect Bethune is coaches talk, man. So when Bethune goes and reach out to somebody, who's to say that the, the, the uh, coaching network is like, hey, man, don't fool Bethune Cookman, man. They don't follow the obligations. Or you don't have to have a talk. And everybody sees it. You know, <laughs> They see it right now, live and in color. Just saying. Uh, let's see. Saban also didn't walk into a campus that's recovering for two hurricanes. Well, I mean, if, if we're being honest here, sans the two hurricanes, do, do we really think it would have been the same situation? It, or, or, let me say this, or anything close. Or, or, if we're being honest here. No. Mm -hmm. So, and I, the gentleman was on there, and I know they got hit with two hurricanes, but he was, uh, Brian was talking about, you know, when um, the Katrina situation was at Southern and Grambling how they're able to, to pick the programs back up. And I'm not saying no situation is the same. But what I am saying is, excuses only take you so far, man. Just saying. Uh, Nico says, I dropped a few shorts in the tire one if you want to speak on it later. Okay, I'll check you out. Shout out to my guy, Nico Savage. Thank you, sir. And um, you got to say pause after that. <laughs> That's funny. Stop talking about hurricanes. Daytona wide open. People, houses are fine. Yeah, see, I don't know about the situation. So y'all saying it's fine, and then y'all blaming the hurricane, man. Which one is it? I don't know. Uh, coaches say to yeah. So I mean, listen, man. I, I'm not a big, I'm not a big fan of making excuses, man, because it, it's the easiest thing to do in this world to make an excuse. Get better, Bethune, man. Get better. Uh, let's see. Coaches see the video. They turn yeah. So the hurricane put trash on in, inside the building. <laughs> hey, I, I can't speak on what I don't know. Uh, Amanda B said, what's up? Good to see you, Amanda. Oh, the God says, Andrew, had caught alive in a minute. Good to see you, man. Continue. Happy success, my brother. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, you as well, man. Appreciate it. Tampa Supreme says, Air Reed is gone. Yep, Air Reed is gone. They have pushed him out. And um, if you want to see his reaction to it, go to his Instagram page. He has his first video where he has his Instagram live and he made it to a video. And, uh, yeah, he, he's very displeased with them letting him go because he wanted to stay. He was saying how he's committed to the, the kids and, and things of that nature. So, yeah, man, Air Reed is gone. Uh, excuse for the tools of the incompetent. You know what time it is. Um, no, I'm okay. I'll be okay. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, excuse for the tools of the incompetent. I see you got the 06 on there, so I'm assuming you you represent the same thing, yeah. <laughs> and that, that phraseology gets thrown around a lot. <laughs> Nobody want to hear you being late to set. Nobody want to hear about none of that, man. Excuses are the tools of the incompetent. Y'all take that one to the bank. But yeah, so, um, yeah, I figured the 06, you know. <laughs> I figured you, bro. Good to see you, Fred. All right, let's see. So, um, so yeah, man, so, what goes forward for Bethune-Cookman? That's going to be the big question. 
where do you go from here? This is a, a, a PR nightmare, but it, it's not a death sentence. At the end of the day, you still got a program with scholarships available. You still got a great area, which is in Daytona, Florida. You still got something to work with. But your, your reputation ain't the best right now. So I, I really wonder what Bethune's going to do to dig themselves out of this. And whatever they do, it's not going to be this year, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this team is going to stink yet again. Um, so hopefully Ed Reef lands on his feet. I don't know. I heard he was talking to Coach Prime today, and I don't know if Prime going to bring him on. I don't know. I think he, he's already completed his staff, so I don't know how that will work out. But I just wish things went better. I, I was really looking forward to Ed Reed and his expertise showing out at Bethune-Cookman. Because I, I, me personally, I like these athletes coming back to these schools and sharing knowledge that they know. Um, one thing I can remember in particular, man, um, my junior year, my coach, Coach Hawkins, he played for Arkansas, and that's when they had Nolan Richardson. So Nolan Richardson came and did, like, two of our practices. And just being real, it was, it was so much more refreshing to learn the game from a, a wizard like Nolan Richardson. No offense than, than my coach, Coach Hawkins. Because Coach Hawkins, it was his first time being a head coach. So it was just certain stuff that he didn't have polish yet. But when, when Coach Richardson came, man, it, it was like, like listening to, to Beethoven talk, you know, <laughs> talk about, you know, classical music. Like, because he just understands basketball at such a high level. So I remember how, how good it was to get instructed by him. So if I'm thinking how that would be with Ed Reed talking to those, especially guys playing defense, it would have been invaluable information. So I hate that that didn't go through. Ed Reed's been in Florida long enough to know the difference between damage from a hurricane and someone not doing their job. Yeah, I, I mean, hey, I would think so. I would think so. So you upload, okay, I got you. The school, I was at play, I transferred, I rescind my scholarship. Yeah, it depends on if you got options. <laughs> if you ain't got no options, you gonna stay your ass where you at. Uh, you know what, I, I'm gonna tell myself a little bit. Um, my senior year at Prairie View, uh, Coach, Coach Hawkins ended up getting let go. And we didn't have a coach for a little while, and it was rumors that Coach Rim, the assistant coach, was going to get in. Eventually he did. But it's a little part where I didn't know if I wanted to play under Coach Rim. Because Coach Rim, uh, Coach Rim is Coach Rim, man. He's, he's still my dog to this day. But um, he just had, he has a quirky disposition about himself sometimes. But, you know, at the time, I just wasn't sure I wanted to play for him. So I tried to go to HBU. And they were interested, but they was like, okay, you only got one year. We don't have a scholarship for you and blah, 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 blah. So I didn't have like a, a bevy of options because also Coach Hawk got fired relatively late. So, and I say all that to say, it's like some kids, yeah, they may, they may want to move around, but it's an opportunity available for you. So you might, you might be stuck. <laughs> Your ass may be stuck right there. So, all right, man, I'm about to pull up to the workhouse, man. Thank y'all for uh, tuning in with your boy. Y'all hit the like button on the way out. Um, I know I've been kind of dragging with content, but I'm, I'll be pushing these out a lot quicker. So thank y'all who, who rock with Hoop Jar, who rock with the brand. And I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.